so anyway, I get the ho- carry this tent back to the hotel, just chuck it in the in the um, wardrobe of the room, and uh, I haven't seen much of my girlfriend by this point. In fact, this is the same girl from Bristol, the same one that was in the manor house. We'd split up for a while, and just before I went to France, we'd only just got back together after a while apart. So I hadn't seen much of it, well, I hadn't seen anything of it. So I said to her, look, come out to Ecuador. I'm on business there. You can spend a couple of weeks with me. I've got to attend to something. So I was waiting for the mule. The mule was going to go off with the tent, and then I was going to spend a couple of weeks with her and then go back to France. So anyway, I've now got the tent. I'm waiting for the mule. She turns, my girlfriend turns up on the, uh, that same day, the second day, I think it was. Goes to collect her from the airport, bring her back to the hotel, go out to dinner in the hotel restaurant, uh, have dinner. And whilst we're eating dinner, and there was hardly anyone in the restaurant, there's this European looking guy walks in, sits down two tables away from us, is quite obviously eavesdropping. And I look at him and I notice he's sat there with the, with the wine menu, not even the food menu. The wine menu upside down, pretending to read it as, it as he's listening to our conversation. I'm trying to. And I said to my girlfriend, I said, Have you seen this guy? Have you seen this guy over here? He's sat there with the menu upside down. And she's like, Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? And I said, Isn't it? <laughs> so anyway, we finished dinner. We go to the lobby of the hotel. And I'd become quite friendly with one of the receptionists by this point. And um, so I asked for the key. She's on duty with a couple of colleagues. And she said to me, she said, oh, uh, have you been to the Galapagos Islands this time, Peter? And I said, no. And I had never been to the Galapagos Islands. And she just looked at me dead in the eye and she said, well, you really should go now then. And I thought, that's weird. What, you know, what's she trying to tell me? And of course, you know, a couple of drinks with dinner, my girlfriend's meow, 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 in my ear, you know, all excited to be here, there with me, not having seen me. And I'm distracted and I'm not thinking clearly. Peter, uh, Peter, Peter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Peter, <laughs> Peter, Peter. <laughs> See, the receptionist, bless her heart, was trying to tell me, get the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, the place was swarming with police at Ecuadorian Interpol. I mean, I probably wouldn't have got very far anyway, even if I'd have left that minute. Who knows? I didn't. <laughs> mm. So turn around into the... Uh, lift up to the top floor, down the corridor, key card, in the door, and as it's gone in the lock, all hell has broken loose, and literally there's uh, balaclavered, plainclothes police charging down the corridor with machine guns, handguns drawn, shouting at me in Spanish, obviously saying, hands up, don't move. And I was like, oh, fuck. (laughs) 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 No, (laughs) dear. So they take us in the room. My girlfriend's just like, what the fuck? She's only been in the country for four hours. First time ever in South America. She's just like, what the hell is happening? I was just like, just be cool. I'll try and do what I can. So they get us in the room. They go straight to the closet, uh, the wardrobe, sorry. Pull out the tent. They've obviously been in there whilst we were at dinner. They've, they've located the tent. They know it's in there. So they, they've got it out. Oh, look what we found. We know there's drugs in there. Um, so we sit down and they've got an English interpreter. Well, sorry, a, um, one of the Ecuadorians speaks a bit of English, half decent. So I, I said, look, fella, I said, look, is there any other way that we can do this? And I know how corrupt the Ecuadorian police are. I mean, yeah, let's be honest, it's Ecuador. So I said, is there any other way that we can do this? I said, I'll give you 25 grand or 30 grand now and give me a phone. Uh, I'll get you as much money as you want, or your whole team. You can keep the tent. Don't want it. That's fine. You have that. <laughs> and we'll just forget this ever happened. You go your way. I'll go our, you know, we'll go our way in uh, happy days. And he looked at me and he said, what do you think we are? We're the Ecuadorian police. We're not corrupt. And I laughed. And I said, you're fucking, you're on, you're on a laugh, aren't you? I said, oh, come on. And he was like, no, we can't do anything. And I know full well had the British police not have been somewhere in the background that they would have done. Because when I got hold of the, the um, case papers, the Colombian who I'd met 
earlier in the day and given all the cash to because I'd paid him then and there for it. Mm-hmm. So he's now got a big rucksack full of cash. In the notes from the Ecuadorian police, he got... St- oh, yeah, they lost him in traffic. Yeah, right. He got <laughs> stopped. You know he got stopped. And they took the money off him and they said, okay, happy days. You, you just disappear. We'll keep the money. And uh, we lost you in traffic. Fuck off. Mm. See what I mean? Me? Nah. I didn't know. No, no losing me in traffic. <laughs> I mean, that meant they had both. They had, they had the lick and they had, yeah, yeah. The, you yeah. know what I mean? A, a good bus. Yeah. It was a good yeah. day for them. They had a good day that day. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> So we get arrested, of course, um, and taken to the Interpol police station, which in Quito is right in front of the airport, literally across the road. So you can hear the planes taking off. You can smell the fuel. Mm. It's just a complete wind up. So you're sat there wishing you were dead and you can hear the planes taking off and you're thinking, I should be on that plane (laughs) and that one and that one and that one (laughs) all day long. And we were in there for five or six weeks. Oh man, it was and that yeah, the, the holding cells in in there were literally a, it was like a dark hole, one light bulb, one cold tap, and that was it. They didn't give you food or drinks or anything. You had to get your own food in there. So uh, the embassy turned up, uh, and luckily we were able to transfer a little bit of money to the embassy, and they sent a, a, an embassy driver in every day with food. Otherwise, we would have died. Um, Starved to death. Yeah, it's pretty rough in there. Crazy. So whilst I was in there, uh, the uh, the uh, embassy also, when, when they came in, they brought in a list of recommended lawyers. Uh, this is the British embassy. And uh, initially, I, I looked down the list and I picked one that looks half decent and uh, called them in. They turned up, like four of them suited and booted, uh, you know, looking all smart secretaries and uh they they were like yeah yeah we can get you four years a four-year sentence but we want a retainer fee of a quarter of a million dollars and i don't know how another three or four hundred thousand to get you four years and i laughed at them i said i'm sorry fellas but you're taking the piss or <laughs> you're having a laugh or whatever in, in america i said like i i could get a, ch- a better result in england for less money uh I said, no, forget it. I said, that, you, you, no, there's just no way. Um, and whilst I was in the cells, there was a, a bunch of uh, Syrians, Syrians, Lebanese, uh, what are they? Syrians, Palestinians, Leban- Lebanese, that was it. And they all spoke English or some of them did quite well. And they were in there for sort of, uh, they, they were transporting cocaine from uh, Ecuador to Israel, selling it, getting the money and, and using that money to fund Hezbollah or Hamas, one or the other, mm-hmm. uh, you know, buying weapons, explosives and carrying on the mm-hmm. cause. So they had quite a good lawyer, Ecuadorian. And uh, they said, look, your embassy is taking the piss. We live here. Some of them lived in Quito, so they knew the school there. They said, we've got a really good lawyer. Uh, she'll charge you a fraction of the money. She knows all the judges. And basically, there it was money counts, bullshit walks. No, what's the expression? Money, money talks, bullshit walks. That's the one. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, no doubt. So you know, and it was who you knew, and she knew the judges, and you know, it is corrupt there, and it's basically a case of paying people off if you want to get a good result. Quite frankly, when I got arrested in Ecuador, I was I was kind of relieved because I knew that the police were coming for me. I knew it was really only a matter of time. And I also knew that if I got arrested in France or Europe, then, you know, I was going to be taken back to England and put in maximum security, A category conditions all day long, all the way through the sentence. And it, and it would have been a big sentence, you know, big, big sentence. Yeah. So part of me was kind of relieved when I got arrested in, in Ecuador because I knew, A, that it was corrupt there, B, that the prisons were pretty crap, i.e. that you could escape from them pretty easily. Just that there was various ways and possibilities of getting out here much quicker than in England. So I stood half a chance of not doing a great deal of time here. Had quite a bit of money around me by this point. 
So I was like, yeah, well, you know, it's what it is. Uh, prison to prison, wherever you are. Just have to try and make the best of it and get, get the fuck out of here as soon as possible. <laughs> my girlfriend, on the other hand, was going to pieces and just like, oh my God, what the fuck have you done? You know, because obviously she didn't really know what was going on. She knew I was dealing with a bit of coke, but she didn't realise it was, you know, <laughs> international and, and yeah. Uh, she wasn't. She wasn't best pleased. Put it that way. So, a bit. <laughs> so, 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 so. Do they take you? Do they take you to an actual prison as opposed to like a, a jail? Like, all right. So they took it. They they did take you to a, a jail first, right? But yeah, you guys ended up. That so being, it started being it is, sent to a prison. Go on, sorry. I was saying you guys end up being sent to a prison. Prior yeah, yeah. To like being convicted or anything like that, whatever, whatever. Yeah, so so we spent five. It was either five or six weeks in the holding cells at uh, the police station because at the time of our arrest, the the whole prison system was in lockdown in Ecuador because uh, the government at the time had, re- had, had uh, got rid of any sort of form of remission, so they'd got rid of parole, any sort of time off. So if you got sentenced to ten or twenty years, say twenty. You would have done nearly twenty. I think they were giving you a month in every year uh, back, but that was it. Mm. There was no time off, for good uh, behaviour, nothing, nothing whatsoever. So all the prisoners run uh, like a, a riot prison, right? In all the prisons across the country, so all the prisons were locked down from the inside. So there was no onward movement of prisoners in the system. So we couldn't go anywhere until this stopped. So this lasted, like I said, five or six weeks. After which we were taken to the uh, initially to the remand centre. Um, well, my girlfriend went to the women's prison. I went to the men's remand centre. There we paid off the guard because uh, it was shit. It was it was pretty poor conditions. So we paid the guard, uh, like the hef- head head guard, heavy gear, to take us into the prison, into the main prison, which is right next door. Uh, so I'm still with these these uh, Syrians and Arabs and whatnot, uh, and one of their friends was kind of the boss on the wing for the foreigners. So he, you know, he he was in charge of stuff in the in the prison. So he was kind of helping from that end. So we all got taken together into the prison because I had the same lawyer as them, and uh, yeah, into the wing, C wing in uh, the prison was called Garcia Moreno. And it was an old Victorian-style prison, just like the Victorian prisons in England, built in 1856, I think, with like a centre and all the wings coming off, like the spokes on a bicycle wheel. You know, so very old. You've got them in America as well, like that old-style prison. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they got taken into Sea Wing, uh, which, uh, like I said, was uh, mainly for foreigners. Uh, and uh, very... It looked very similar to the prison in Gloucester that I was in. I, I, almost identical in structure. But apart from here in Ecuador, there, were, there was a bakery. There was a shop on the wing. There were restaurants. There were families living in there. The kids would go out to school in the day, come back in the evening. Mm. Um, there was a hardware store in there. Your visits uh, would come into the prison all day Wednesday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Every other weekend, you could you could have your girlfriend, wife, any female come into the prison, and your visits came into the wing there, into your cell. Um, so every other week, uh, you could like I said, any female to come in, and they would stay the night with you in your in your actual cell. So you kick out your cellmates, you buy a cell there if you wanted a bit of privacy, about $2,000, have whatever you want in it, fridge, TV, DVD, aircon, cable, uh, uh, cooker. I mean, literally whatever you wanted, computer, phone. Uh, I initially, I didn't buy a cell because I thought well, I'm going to get out of here. You know, right. I thought, yeah, I said, we need to get comfortable. I thought, yeah, I thought I won't waste the money. <laughs> but after a while, when it became apparent, I wasn't really going anywhere. Uh, you know, and I ended up having to go gilly, spent $25,000 to get my girlfriend released, uh, put my hands up, said, yeah, it was me. Uh, made out that I was a drug mule just to play things down a bit. 
she got released after about um was it four or five months Someone, actually, yeah about say four months 